Hello students. In previous lecture of jurisprudence, we had started the concept of natural school of jurisprudence. In the previous lecture, we had discussed what is the meaning of natural law and how the study of natural law had been divided by way of various theories. And that theories had been divided into four categories. And out of that four categories of theories, ancient theories of natural law is the starting point for the study of the concept of natural law. This concept of natural law had been developed in Greece. The Greek thinkers firstly developed the idea of natural law and they had also laid down various essential features of natural law. On the one hand, the instability of political institutions and frequent changes in law and government in Greece made some jurists of Greece to think that law was for the purpose of serving the interest of the strong class of society only and having no use to other class of the society. But the same conditions which was prevalent in Greece made some other jurists in Greece to think on a different line. They saw frequent changes in law and government in Greece as an opportunity to develop new universal principles of law that would tackle and control the arbitrariness of the government. They gave the idea in relation to the concept of natural law a very systematic and logical expression of the idea of natural law we can find in the writings of Socrates. Socrates was a famous Greek jurist who made the legal theory in respect of natural law. Socrates said that like physical law Socrates said, like natural physical law, there is natural moral law prevalent in the society. According to Socrates, man possesses insight. And this insight of man reveals to him the goodness and badness of the things. And makes him know what are the various absolute moral rules for the society. According to Socrates, this human insight is the basis to judge the validity of the law. That means by using the insight, a man can conclude whether a given law is good or not for a society. But it is very important to note here that Socrates did not say that if the positive law is not in conformity with the moral law, then the positive law would be disobeyed. Rather, according to Socrates, it is the appeal of the insight of the man to obey the positive law. It is not a matter whether the positive law is in conformity with the moral law or not. That was why Socrates preferred to drink poison in obedience to law than to run away from the prison. Why he said this? Because his theory was a plea for security and stability which was one of the principal needs of the age. 
because according to socrates if a man will not obey the positive law there will be no stability in the law there will be no stability in the government and if there will be no stability in the law there will be no stability in the government there cannot be security for the man because to give the proper security to a man there must be stability of law and government in a society that is why he was saying that it was the appeal of the insight of man to obey the positive law even though that positive law is not in conformity with the moral law his papil plato spotted the same theory of socrates but it is in the writing of aristotle we find a proper and logical elaboration of this theory of natural law aristotle was also a famous greek jurist and according to aristotle man is a part of the nature in two ways firstly according to aristotle man is a part of the creature of the god like other creatures of the god and second man possesses active reason by which a man can shape his will by active reason man can discover the eternal principles of law justice he says that the man's reason being the part of the nature so the law which is discovered by the man's reason is called natural justice law so far as the relation of natural law with positive law is concerned then according to aristotle positive law should try to incorporate in itself the rules of natural law but it is very important to note here that according to aristotle even if the positive law is deficient in comparison to natural law or if the positive law falls short of the natural law standards or principles even then the positive law should be obeyed the positive law should not be disobeyed according to aristotle if there is any deficiency in the positive law then what will be done then the positive law should be reformed then the positive law should be amended rather than to be broken by a man he argued that slave must accept their lords for slavery because it was a natural institution at that time aristotle gave natural law a very solid ground to stand upon because the fullest elaboration of natural law theory in the greek legal philosophy was made by aristotle the thesis which aristotle had given in respect of natural law school had inspired great philosophers of the world even in modern times jurist like kant hegel kelsen stemler oh much from the theory of aristotle that is the reason that aristotle is also considered to be the founding father of natural law school thank you very much